Okay, welcome back everybody. This is Omar Soriano and here we are again with the chromatone and today we're going to be talking about scales. Some would argue very passionately that scales are the fundamental building block of everything we do in music. Uh, that chords are derived from scales, that melodies are derived from scales and so uh, we need to get to the scales sooner rather than later. So I'm going to talk about just three basic scales today. Um, up on the screen you'll see I have actually eight scales, scales in quotes because the last one isn't really a scale, but these are things that I've been working on and, and I think would be beneficial for any chromatone player <clears throat> to learn in all 12 keys, which are the major scale, the natural minor, the minor blue scale, the harmonic minor, the half diminished scale, six diminished, six diminished minor, and the Harris progression, which is not really a scale, but is a progression of chords derived from the six diminished and the six diminished minor. Um, we won't get to all of those today, but just to give you the lay of the land. Today we'll just talk about the major, the natural minor, and the minor blues. Okay? So, major scale. I did not come up with this fingering for the major scale on the chromatone. Uh, this is adapted from uh, from something Paul Vandervoort sent me uh, for uh, for fingering scales on the Janko piano, and I simply adapted it to the chromatone. And it didn't take much to do that. So for the C major scale or for any major scale, you're going to follow this formula. You're going to go to the root, and you're definitely going to go to a place where you at least have a row below. Because the way we're going to finger the major scale, we're going to take up three rows. We're going to start with a middle row, go down, and then go up. We're going to, we're going to limit ourselves to three rows on the major scale. And we're going to play the root with our second finger on the right hand. We're going to go two, three, four. I'm counting the fingers right now, right? So in, in, in terms of notes, these are C, D, E. Second finger, third finger, fourth finger. I'm going to bring a thumb down below and play F down here. F. You're going to go up to this higher row, or one row higher than where we started. With the second finger, we're going to play G. With the third finger, we're going to play A. Thumb below again for B. And then back to our root C with the same finger we started with. Now, I'm a big believer in starting off a scale and ending it an octave later with the same finger. That's because I want to be able to extend that scale as long as I want to across the piano. I always practice scales two octaves at a time. So I would practice C with my right hand like this. video about chords, you always want to practice everything with the metronome one. So I will practice my C major scale with my right hand first, like this. Always with an eye towards technique. Raising your fingers high, like one would do in a hand exercise. Precision. Listening to the metronome. One of the reasons why I have the metronome going every eighth note instead of every fourth note is I like the metronome to remind me when I'm on time as much as possible. So I'm very conscious of the metronome. We'll get into a few things with dynamics after we knock out the, the left hand. So let's talk about the left hand. Left hand, actually first thing I want to say is we're going to do the same exact shape in the left hand. The same way we go three across, down one, 
two across at the top, down one, and then back to the root. We're going to preserve that same shape for the left hand because as we've discussed in other videos, learning increases, learning goes faster when fingering in the left hand and the right hand are as similar as possible. So the exact fingers you're going to use in the left hand are on the root four, three, two for C, D, E, thumb on F, G with the third finger, A with the second finger, down to B with the thumb, fourth finger on the root. Why? Because we, that's where we started. We, 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 ideally, we always want to end the octave with the same finger we started with. So all together it's Now that's a bit of a trick. Well, it, it, it becomes a little bit tricky when we get to doing it both hands. Well, let's just, let's get it in our left hand first. All right, so we want to practice with the metronome. Once you've got it at say 40, 60, 80 beats per minute in your left hand and your right hand, you want to combine them together. You, you want to be practicing both hands together. So that would look like this. This, these are the drills that are going to help you become a good chromatone player. This is what's going to give you timing. This is what's going to give you finger strength. This is what's going to give you clarity. I, I, I don't know how to become a solid piano player or a chromatone player without doing scales and similar drills. So you need to come into this. Okay, so with the metronome, you get... Again, we're doing it over two octaves. Okay, now a few things about dynamics. At first you want to play it straight and clear to get your clarity. Eventually you want to start altering the dynamics. Right? So first you want to go louder. staccato then you want to go soft staccato And then back to loud legato. So on and so forth. I find that once I've done a few cycles through those dynamics, I'm I'm generally ready to speed it up, right? So, this is how we get faster, right? You know, and 
I'm, I'm exaggerating going faster. I mean, I might spend a week at the older tempo. I might spend a week at this tempo. And then I might spend three weeks at that tempo before I'm ready for this tempo. Now, there are two schools of thought as to whether, at what point you should begin doing it in all 12 keys. Some people will say from the very beginning, from the moment you've got the fingering, you already want to go to the next. You want to go to F, you know. Um, the gentleman who wrote the original pamphlet on, on getting started with the chromatone, he actually suggested for the first three to six months of playing with the chromatone, you should just stick to doing everything in C in order to get familiarity for yourself. So if, if you're just getting started and you want to learn all your first chords in the key of C, you want to learn all your scales in C to get some confidence before you're ready to go to the other uh, keys, that's fine too. But when you can, within six months, you should start saying, okay, I know how to do the C major scale at 150 beats per minute. I'm ready to start doing it in F and on all the other 12 keys. Right? I recommend going through the cycle of fifths or the cycle of fourths, starting with C, then going to F, and then uh, G flat, and then E flat, right? So on and so forth. Okay, let's get out of the C major scale. Let's talk about the E minor scale. Now, the E minor scale didn't take a lot of creativity to figure out the fingering, because I just took the same exact fingering for the, uh, the C major, the Ionian mode, and I transferred it over to the Aeolian mode, the A minor scale. In other words, it's the same scale except it starts in a different place and ends in a different place. In the case of A minor, instead of starting with C, you're going to start with A, but it contains the same notes. So all we need to do is use the same fingers. Now, what, what, what finger did we play A with on the C major scale? We played it with C. So we're going to go C for A, thumb for B, two, two, three, four, thumb, two, three, thumb, two, three, four, thumb, two, three. So it's essentially the same exact scale except you're starting in a different place. So you would practice it like this. Left hand fingering, same thing. You start with the two finger, go down to the thumb, four, three, two, thumb, three, two, thumb, four, three, two, thumb, three, two, thumb, three, two. Whoop, sorry. There we go. Okay, so we go. Practicing with the metronome. Sorry, I kept going because I forgot that I was in A. I was thinking I was in C for a second. I need to stop here. And, and we'll talk in another video very briefly about how do you know where to stop, especially if you're not playing with the diatonic keys. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's knock out this A minor with the metronome. That's the kind of thing I'm constantly trying to knock out of my system. I'm constantly trying to get more clean, more precise. So I'm learning just like you all are. Okay, next scale up, last one we're going to do today, 
it's a one that's a big part of my sound because I'm interested in jazz and blues and soul and funk. Um, the first skill I always want to learn whenever I, I even look at an instrument is how do you play the minor blue scale. Now, the minor blue scale that I'm going to show you, or the fingering for it, is no longer the way I'm fingering it. This is a fingering I developed when I first got on the chromatone. It's okay, it's the one I would recommend for other people, but I didn't like it for myself because I find that it's not entirely conducive for speed. But I'm going to show it to you, I think it's the, the middle of the road, most balanced way to do the minor blue scale, and that is you start on, uh, well on the screen I have it up in A minor, so let's do it on A minor, which makes sense because that's the, this is the minor blue scale that you would, play, you would play in the key of C. So you start off with A, here with the thumb, go way up, go up four rows to two, that's going to be our C, right, with this, that's C, so that's our minor third with the second finger. We're going to play the uh, next note with the uh, third finger. So if I'm rusty at this, it's because I'm no longer practicing it this way myself, but I do think it's a good way to play the minor blues scale. So first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, right? Thumb underneath, right, for E. second finger here for uh, for G and then back down here. Now you can do it this way where you put your third finger there if you're going to end it but as I said before we like to end the scale with the same finger we started with so that in case we want to extend it until the next octave so like this. So let's practice it. I'm almost scared of practicing this to the metronome because I'm so rusty with it. Let's go nice and slow. That's the right hand fingering. Left hand fingering. Now, again, this is one of the first scales I figured out how to finger, so I, I, I break some of the rules that I laid down later on with those principles of fingering that I did a video about. And what I did here is instead of starting it here, which is kind of awkward to start it way down there because the pinky is much longer than the thumb, I started it up here, so that's A as well. well I guess I'll do it up here, right? Right, there's A. So it's A, five, my five finger, four, four, three, two, one, two, thumb again, So there you go. I, again, I said I'm rusty doing it this way. Try it this way. If this way works for you, great. I found after doing it this way for about two or three months, I found that my speed was not progressing nearly as much as I thought should be for the blue scale. I was finding that I was still kind of stuck on around 120 beats per minute, whereas with the major scale, I was already at 180. I was like, why am I progressing so fast at the major scale? And uh, this fingering that I figured out for the A minor blue scale is kind of holding me back. So I came up with a different fingering, and this is kind of sloppy uh, because, how do I put it? In, on diatonic piano, a lot of blues mus musicians finger their minor blues scales with only two fingers, and it works fine. I'm not going to bring out the diatonic piano to, to show you, but a lot of, because of the up down shape of the C major blues scale, Right? A lot of a lot of blues musicians, a lot of blues pianists just go C, E flat, F, G flat, G, B flat, C. And they play the blues scale like this with just two fingers. And I like it, it works for me. 
So that's the fingering that I've been doing for the minor blue scale lately. So I'll start here. I'm really just going to use two fingers. I'm going to start A, C, D, E flat, E, G, A, A, C, D, E flat, E, G, A, repeat, A, C, D, E flat, E, G, A. So with the metronome, using just two fingers, Yes. 